When you look at the poverty line index of each country, you are surprised to see that whatever the country you point out, it will always claim that it has at least 20% of its people living in poverty. This is valid both for poor countries and for rich countries. And the question is, if a country is rich, why is a part of the population poor? The first and one of the biggest causes by far is proportional spending of the salary. Let's take two individuals working for McDonald's with low salaries in two countries with opposite economies. One is A, Ahmad from Indonesia, he's making $100 a month. Meanwhile B, Bernardo from Italy, is making $1,000 a month. Bernardo has several times more money than Ahmad each month, but it's almost certain that wherever you live, you will spend around half of your salary just for rent. Ahmad will certainly opt for local farm products when buying groceries in the local market. Meanwhile, Bernardo in Italy will go to a supermarket, and as Bernardo sees cheap products as perceived low quality products, he will buy perceived higher quality goods that carry labels such as GMO free, vegan, high in fibers, low in sugars, but also dairy products and high end meats and fish. In summary, they spend the same percentage of their salary on the same quantity of products. Even if cheaper options of renting and groceries exist for a fraction of the cost, but Bernardo chooses to be more comfortable than saving for the future. And with 20% salary left, respectively Ahmad with $20 and Bernardo with $200, it's probable that this money will be spent in miscellaneous ways, like debt repayment, utilities and hopefully also entertainment and some savings at the end of the month. This means that for a considerable amount of people that are not financially aware, the more money they make, the more they spend on the same amount of goods, but with different prices. If Bernardo suddenly made 10,000 instead of $1,000 a month, chances are he would spend 3 to 5,000 for a very good house. The second issue is quite plain obvious, but very few people actually give enough importance. Savings and investments are compulsory for a future with less stress, but how? Savings can help you prevent issues like having no money when you're fired, a car breakdown, the loss of a parent or any other monetary issue. Meanwhile, investments are small amounts of your salary that can compound throughout your life. A weight that invests for all his life can make much more money in the future than a surgeon that does not invest and relies on his salary. The third issue is the opposite of the preceding above mentioned, contracting debt which is interest on your shoulder for the future. There's nothing wrong in contracting debts if you use it to make an upgrade for your business, like buying more restaurants or equipment for a factory, but contracting a debt for something useless can literally make you a slave of debt, especially if you have a limited salary and must pay every month. Another big issue is governmental regulations. In developing countries, regulations are often so few that you can literally go on the road and sell whatever you want. Everyone who wants to work can literally work, and those that can prosper on the road can also build restaurants or companies in the future. This happens because the country acknowledges that it is indeed poor and can't be too exigent. Developed countries are very exigent. Regulations are so tight that doing the same can bring you to jail or you can be fined for thousands of dollars. You can't sell on the road, except if you open a VAT account for tax declaration and buy permits and licenses that have very steep prices, even before starting to actually sell something from your business. And therefore, even those who want to work may not be able to work except as an employee in a company, creating dependency. Another reason is the search for safe jobs combined with a lack of ambition and the lack of prevention. This can happen with someone who decides to work in unenfireable positions like in the government, in the administration or by working all your life in the same company. By working in the same position you have very predictable income and if you don't invest for the future you may end up in the above mentioned point too which is not having enough savings or investments and relying solely on your future pension, working until death or dependency on other people, especially relatives. Moreover, if you don't prevent things now that you can, you may end up with severe issues in the future like not paying the taxes or not taking care of your body, which in some countries like the US you have to pay that too. Another big issue is governmental benefits and funding for unproductive activities. This happens especially when the citizens of a country are given too many benefits from the taxes and therefore they are desensitized from working. This can happen for example in countries that give very long unemployment benefits for half a year or more and with benefits as high as the salary and no negative repercussions on your pension. You are not lazy if you don't look for a job for 8 months while you get the same salary from the government as unemployment benefits. You are just obtaining your right, and that's right, but it's not productive. The seventh reason is the unnecessary but comfortable spending. This is linked with the first issue, the proportional spending issue. Imagine, in a society in which everyone wants to have a car, you desire a car too. But what if that car is actually really unnecessary? 
It may be unnecessary if you live in a city with very good public transportation, or if you can easily walk to your job, or bike, or use the electric scooter. In most very connected cities like New York, only 25% of the people have a driving license. A cheap car that costs you $25,000 at the time of purchase may cost you up to $50,000 more between fuel, insurance, reparations, store roads and other taxes just to operate for 10 years and maintenance is always a debt when it's not useful and it's not a wise choice, except if you really have no alternative. Another reason can be addressed to the victim mentality. This generally happens to average citizens that criticize society for being unfair when they can't achieve something and unfair when only them can achieve something. This is a very debilitating idea, because if you think you are not the cause of your current condition and the people outside of you are the reason, it means that you can't do anything to grow out of your misery. If other people are the reason, you need to change many people, but if you are the reason, you just need to change yourself. And even if the society is just or unjust as you perceive it, in most cases if you are constant and if you look actively for opportunities, you will most likely succeed. Another reason is being unlucky. Out of millions of people in our countries, unfortunately thousands of us daily leave events completely out of their decision. This can be a financial crisis, the loss of a relative, illnesses or other issues we obviously can't prevent. The last reason is the apathism for work. It is understandable that not everyone is interested in participating in this economic game we created for us. And therefore, some people may decide to live an alternative life even if this means in extreme poverty. And yes, just because they don't like the idea of working. If you find these videos useful, please don't hesitate to click on the right or on the left to see one more.